You know, anyone that's seen Malcolm in the Middle probably wasn't very surprised to see Brian Cranston in his underwear when the show started. Hello everyone, I'm Papa Ken, and welcome to the brand new series called Discovering Breaking Bad, where I'm going to be getting into one of the most popular TV shows I know for sure in America, probably elsewhere in the world as well, but it's a show that I got two episodes in before and just never kept watching for whatever reason, but I'm going to do it now, at least starting with the first season for this particular segment. And uh, let me just say this. First of all, if you haven't watched this show yet, which I think most of you probably have, but if you haven't watched the show yet, go back, watch the first episode, and then come back and watch this one because it's something, uh, there are going to be spoilers, needless to say. And just, you know, again, th th don't complain about it, but there will be spoilers in the comments for sure, uh, and I'm just going to say whatever comes to my mind. Now, for this particular series, uh, I know if you watch my Discovering Doctor Who series uh, on my channel, you know that I sort of had to have a tendency to summarize episodes. I'm going to try and change that around uh, with Breaking Bad in that I'm going to, well, first for this episode, I'm going to sort of uh, talk about my thoughts on uh, a bunch of the characters at first. But to, for the rest of the episodes as well, um, I'm going to talk about three of my favorite moments from the episode, or three very important moments that I think, whether they're good or bad. Um, I'm going to point out a favorite quote from the episode, uh, for every episode if possible. Uh, this one definitely had one. And then at the end of this episode, possibly others later uh, in uh, other episodes, I'm going to talk about three estimates that I have of plot points or events that could happen throughout the course of the show and all of its seasons. So hopefully that'll keep things interesting and won't be too boring. But to get started, my thoughts on some of the characters. Obviously the main character, Walter, Wright, Walter White, played by uh, Brian Cranston, is a very, very interesting character. Obviously for him to, you know, for the show to go along for so long, as long as it did, you need to have a good, interesting character. And, I mean, from the very start, I un unfortunately can say that I empathized with the way he was. He, I mean, he's a very, he's very much a pushover and has that sort of loser mentality. And, I mean, you turn, he was, turn, he turned 50 and... Uh, he had a good. He has a good family, but you know he doesn't have a lot to show for his life. Again, uh, he. I mean, he's a good teacher. That's obvious. Uh, I would personally take him as a teacher. I, from my perspective, he seems like just someone that would be a great chemistry teacher to have, at least for students that are interested, which his students weren't. I'll actually revisit that in a minute. Um, but he seems like a very nice guy, just a pushover. And obviously that has a that takes a huge change as the episode goes along when he finds out that he has the ter he has inoperable terminal lung cancer, and yeah, it's just I I really like him and I mean, that's one character that obviously I'm just excited to see where he goes uh, as the show goes along because I'm sure it's going to be a huge crazy ride for him based on this episode alone. And then there's also his wife, Skylar, who seems like a very nice, loving wife. Uh, she's definitely the dominant one in the family, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm interested to see how their dynamics change throughout the episode, because they're even, see especially with, at the end, Walter taking on more of a dominant stance, uh, literally, um, at the very end of the episode. Uh, like I said, I'm very interested to see how that goes. And then there's uh, his son, Walter Jr., who uh, I, I really like their relationship. I really like their father-son relationship. It's like they have a very good connection. And just a little conversation they have at the very beginning, uh, Walter Jr. says, so how does it feel to be 50? And Walter says, uh, how does it be, feel to be a smartass? And I just, I, I really like that little conversation. I thought it spoke worlds about... <clears throat> Uh, their entire relationship, how they, how much they love each other, it was just, I, I really liked that. And then there's also Skylar's brother, who is a cop, and I unfortunately can't remember his name, put it right here, but 
he is like the super alpha male. He is the guy you kind of hate, but you like him because he's well, he's not even charming. He's just like a big personality. But it's someone that, at least for me, I think throughout the course of the show, I'm going to love to hate him or maybe hate to love him. It's hard to say at this point, but it seems like a very interesting, strong personality. I'm inter interested to see what part he's going to play throughout the rest of the show, which is, I'm sure is going to be huge since, I mean, his primary part seems to be finding meth lords and busting them. Um, and then there's, I guess, Skylar and his sister who I don't know what to think of her yet. Like, she has a few interactions with Skylar. Just seems like, God, seems like kind of a burnout. I don't know if she's on drugs herself, but she just, the character isn't very interesting at all. Like, not very well established beyond just being Skylar's sister. I don't know. Uh, I mean, she may be a character that sort of comes out of nowhere and actually becomes interesting. I mean, we have a bunch of seasons to go through to find that out, but... You know, she was, eh, whatever. Uh, and then there's Jesse Pinkman, who, I love him. He's a complete smartass, uh, I believe a high school dropout, because he was one of Walter's uh, former students. And his entire relationship with Walter, I think, is going to be hilarious to see evolve throughout, because, <clears throat> I mean, Jesse... I can't tell if he doesn't just doesn't care about Walter or is like, you know, I mean, he's he's just the very much the whole mindset of I don't care F you. It's like <laughs> uh, I, I guess there's a meme going around. I don't I don't know if it's established in the first season or not, but he calls everyone bitches. I'm interested. Like I said, I'm just interested to see how their relationship evolves. Um, actually, one one particular moment that I thought was interesting. Actually, I, uh, well, actually, it's going to be one of the three uh, moments in this episode that I'm going to mention later. Now, of the moments that occurred throughout this episode, and there were a lot of them. I mean, uh, obviously, the one, the biggest one that occurs, and this isn't actually in my uh, top three, but it's it's the moment where everything turns around, and it's when Walter finds out that he's diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer. And that's, I, I find this part of the episode, I mean, it's, it's obviously the strongest part because it's what sets everything in motion, but on a lot of shows, that would be like the moment where the switches, or a switch is flipped, or whatever, like, basically where just everything changes. And it does, but I like that they made Walter more complex, in that it's not just a, flip is, or a switch is flipped and all of a sudden everything's changed. It's more like a series of switches that have to be flipped because there's like little things that occur throughout the episode where you can tell that, you know, it's really start either things are starting to sink in. He's still fighting against certain aspects of it. He hides it from his wife. But that that is the moment that I think that is it's going to define the entire season. As for the moments that I personally found to be my favorites of this particular episode, the first one is the extremely awkward and, at least for me, hard to watch sex scene. I, I don't even know if you would call it a sex scene exactly. It's about, it's very early in the episode and it's before the big change happens. Uh, Skylar's in the bed with her laptop. Uh, Walter gets in bed and she just all starts rubbing him. And just the conversation that transpires from there, uh, it's just, it, it was so painful to watch because it's just incredibly telling of, I mean, like I said, they, they obviously love each other, but the romance is gone. It was basically the epitome of the boring sex life. It's like, you know, you hear stories about how when you get married, uh, things get really boring. You know, that's whatever. I'm married. I'm not going to go into de any details on that, otherwise my wife's going to hit me. But uh, it's like, this is the epitome of that boring sex life stereotype and it was just so incredibly incredibly painful to watch now the second favorite moment of this episode is actually one where uh not going out of character exactly but jesse shows seemingly legitimate concern for walter because walter is uh, com completely gone off his rocker from jesse's perspective and he's you know he asks you know, what's going on with you? Are, have you gone crazy? Are you depressed? Because that's something I need to know. And I... Walter's response to that, 
It's like it takes him a moment, but he just says, I'm awake. That, uh, that was just such a, like, in one word, it's just such a powerful moment. And I thought showed just like, you know, that l a little bit of change in their dynamics. Again, with Jesse showing, again, what I see as legitimate concern for Walter. And Walter just sort of summing up the change that has occurred for him. Like, the perspective of, I was blind or I was asleep before and I'm finally awake. I'm going to do whatever I want. Without telling Jesse, he's basically saying, I have nothing else to live for. Uh, I'm going to die. Might as well do it. <laughs> but yeah, that, like I said, that moment was just so good. And my absolute favorite moment of this entire episode was when uh, uh, the Walter family, Walter, or, or the White family, is at a clothing store where they would uh, take Walter Jr. to get some new clothes. And while he's trying them on, uh, there's some boys in the back of the store that are mocking, mocking him, just like making fun of him, calling him basically, uh, calling him to be a retard. I, it, I actually forget um, what disease it is that Walter Jr. has, um, and I feel bad for actually forgetting that. I'll put it down here just in case you don't know, like I don't know, but. Uh, what happens after that is just one of the most amazing moments for me in watching television in that, uh, you know, uh, Skylar is just telling them to ignore the boys, and I, I think Skylar was going to say something to them, but then Walter, you know, just says, don't say anything, and walks away. So it's, it's seemingly a moment of, oh, I mean, he's just backing out completely, like cowering out of the situation completely. And then all of a sudden he comes, like, I guess he went through the back and comes back through the front of the store and just takes out one of those kids. It was, oh, that entire segment is just, it's stuff that everyone wants to do to someone. It's like, if you had bullies back in high school, if you had bullies in life, you have people you hate, people that made fun of you, or people that you know and love, that was just one of those moments that everyone wants to do. They want to go up to one of those boys and just beat the shit out of them. And again, like I said, it's just that moment. I'm sure there are going to be a lot more moments that actually one-up that for me. But that moment in and of itself was just the absolute best that I've seen in the show so far. And I'm looking forward to see whether or not there are moments that I can actually outdo that for me. I got got many seasons of this show to go through, so I'm sure that there will there might be more that could outdo that. Now, as for my favorite quote from this episode, it's one that I honestly think is sort of telling of what we can expect from the show, definitely from Walter, uh, throughout the course of this show, and I mean, it, definitely in this episode alone. Now, if you give me just a moment to pull this up. Uh, it's a monologue that Walter gives uh, while he's teaching a class in school. And actually, that reminds me. Uh, there's one particular student that I hope bad things happen to him. <laughs> I, I really do. I honestly hope that something happens to this kid really that's really bad. That's kind of malicious, I know. But if you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. And if you've seen the rest of the show, don't spoil it for me if something does bad does happen to him because I want it to be a surprise and I want to relish that moment. But anyway, my favorite quote from this episode. Again, a monologue from Walter. Chemistry is the study of matter, but I prefer to see it as the study of change. Now just think about this. Electrons, they change their energy levels. Molecules change their bonds. Elements, they combine and change into compounds. Well, that's, that's all of life, right? It's the constant. It's the cycle. It's solution, dissolution, just over and over and over. It's growth, then decay, then transformation. It is fascinating, really. I honestly just feel like that monologue right there sort of sets the tone for what we can expect from this entire show. There's going to be all kinds of change that occurs throughout Walter's life. And it's like he said, I mean, that's, that's all of life. There's going to be changes, but I think it just sort of sets a tone for all these dynamic changes that are going to occur 
like chemically, obviously, because this is all about him starting. Uh, well, I don't know about a meth empire exactly, but it's just starting up this business of selling meth to. I mean, his primary objective is. Uh, making money for his family because they're very low on money. He's having been having to work two jobs, one of which he rage quit, which was an awesome moment as well. But it's just, uh, and I mean, uh, again, like in this episode alone, he goes through so much change that that monologue may have just been for this episode in particular. But like I said, I have a feeling that it's go it really sets the tone for the show overall. Now, finally, my three estimates for what I believe is going to occur, whether it's an event or just sort of plot points that occur throughout the course of the show. Now, there may be more estimates that I give, but for now, these are going to be the three that I'm really looking at. Now, if you don't mind me looking at my little notebook here. The first estimate I have is that Pinkman will start to see Walter as a father figure. Now, this is one... It, it I wouldn't have thought this at first until... Uh, Jesse showed the legitimate concern for Walter earlier in the episode. I don't know whether this is going to occur or not, but it's just sort of an estimate I have that the relationship is going to evolve. Uh, whether they just remain business partners or what, I honestly think that he's going to start to see him as a father figure. And actually, now that I think about it, if that does happen, how will that affect Walter's, rel Walter's relationship with his son? My second estimate is that Walter will start to get more and more aggressive as the show goes along, whether it's through uh, his uh, lung cancer, pain from that, or maybe as the show goes along, he become like if he makes more and more money, he'll just like the power will go to his head, and I honestly think that he'll get more aggressive and eventually become a form of a villain, or maybe you might look at it as a sort of an anti-hero, but it just uh, so a sort of anti-protagonist, or like the antagonist of the overall story. It's, I don't know, it's really hard to put into words, but I just really think that he's going to sort of continue on that downward slope to the point where it just consumes him, really. And my third and final estimate is that the brother-in-law and possibly Skylar are going to end up being a major foil. Uh, not necessarily antagonists uh, to Walter, but they're going to be major aspects of the show that just sort of, uh, like, a, a conflict revolves around. Now they, I mean, th I know they can't focus the entire show on that throughout all these seasons. Maybe they can. I don't know. But I just really think that, especially with the brother-in-law being in the task force that he is, uh, working to take out meth, not meth addicts, but uh, meth dealers and their labs... And I can only assume that Skylar is going to uh, cause some issues with Walter just because of the way he's seemingly changed overnight. I, I, I'm i really interested to see what roles they play in the overall story of the rest of the show. The brother-in-law possibly having a larger impact as far as like actual conflict... But, I don't know, I, part of me feels like Skylar is also going to be, again, not an antagonist exactly, but sort of a person that causes issues for maybe Walter's overall goal, or sort of throws, uh, throws a monkey wrench in the works, basically. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope you enjoy this uh, sort of different style as far as reviewing and going over the episode as opposed to the way I do things with discovering Doctor Who. If you liked it, please let me know below. Uh, if you have any recommendations as to things you would like me to hit on on particular episodes as this continues along, please let me know. And uh, again, if you have any comments about the episode itself, certain things that you thought were particularly interesting about it that I didn't hit on, or maybe things that I missed entirely, please let me know about that. And I'm going to do my best to make this a weekly show. I'll try and get more episodes out per week if possible, but full-time work may not allow that. But <clears throat> as always, thank you all again very much for watching this, and I'll see you all next time on the next Discovering Breaking Bad.